Hey everybody, it's just me, LTM. I am going to take the next step in this experiment. So this is the kombucha scoby that I have finally been able to grow from a purchased commercial kombucha. And I think it's ready for me to start using it. It's quite thick, it's quite substantial, it's got sufficient body to it, it's going to hold itself together, you know, I can shake it and it's not coming apart, so I'm going to start brewing kombucha with this. To start brewing kombucha, I have boiled some of my filtered water and I'm going to add to it some of this tea that I picked up from my local um, for free site on Facebook. So somebody had this tea from a company called Kombucha Camp, Hannah's Special Tea Blend. You can see there it's got a few different things. It's got black tea, green tea, white tea, yerba mate and rooibos. So I am going to put some of that into this water and let that brew for 10 to 15 minutes to make myself a nice strong brew of tea. This is what the um, Kombucha Camp Hannah's Special Brew looks like in the bag. This hadn't been opened, so it was totally sealed. I'll just put some out into a little uh, bowl so that you can get a better idea of what this tea looks like. So quite a few different little bits and pieces in there. Um, leaf and sticks and other kinds of little bits. I'm guessing the bread bits might be the boss. But yeah, that looks really interesting. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this tea turns out. I looked up the Kombucha Camp website and it says for four litres to add four to six teaspoons of their tea. So I have put teaspoon, two teaspoons of the tea into this uh, tea strainer oops and I'm going to let it sit in there for 10 to 15 minutes to brew so here's my tea now that it has brewed for a while it's brewed a little bit longer than it was meant to I'll just take this over to the sink and because there are still little bits of tea in there I'm going to strain it as I pour it into the jar. So I've got a jar here which has been sterilized earlier and I'm just going to strain this tea mixture into that jar so that I can get all the other little leftover bits and pieces of um, tea, solid matter, not going down into my container. There was a little bit of excess there. So I just put this over on the bench. It's nice and clear. So now I have to wait for this to cool down. And once it is, uh, actually I need to add some sugar to it. So I'll add one quarter cup of plain white sugar. And until that, just stir that until it dissolves. And then I need to wait for this to cool down before I add the SCOBY to it. So I'm just going to add in some white sugar and then just leave this sitting here on my bench to cool down. You can see here the SCOBY that I have grown. Just bring that a little bit close to the camera. You can see the white growth on the top of that liquid that is the scoby that I've been waiting to grow so this was the second attempt that I made to grow my scoby and that seems to have worked this jar here contains the tea brew tea and sugar brew that I made yesterday so this is the liquid that is going to turn into kombucha this will be my first ferment so I'm going to pour some of the liquid in here into this jar and place the scoby that is in this jar into this jar and then this will sit for I'll probably leave it about five days before I start tasting it I don't like my kombucha super vinegary super acidic 
So I do tend to bottle it for second ferment sooner than some of the people that I know. But it's totally up to you, up to your individual taste, how you do that. So I'll take the lid off this. This just had a lid on it to, uh, which is again just paper towel, just to stop anything from going in there whilst the tea cooled down. And here is the lid off the brand new scoby that I have grown. Here's a bit closer view of the scoby. So you can see it's white and it's a reasonably thick. It actually has different thicknesses in the jar. Different spots are a bit thicker than others. So it's a bit thicker over here and goes down to being a little bit thin over there. You can see these goopy bits hanging down. That's a very good sign. That's not a bad thing at all. So I'm going to carefully take the scoby out of there and then pour some of that liquid some of this green liquid into the container of tea that is sitting over there. So this scoby will eventually go into the into the tea container, hopefully sit on the top of that tea container up here, and eventually it will grow to be the same shape as the top of that. So I'm not at all concerned that this jar is uh, slightly smaller and a different shape to that jar because the scoby will grow to fill the surface area. So I'm going to uh, take the scoby out of here very carefully because I think it's still probably reasonably fragile and I'll take the liquid out, well I'll pour some of the liquid into the other container. So now I'm going to take the scoby out of this jar, I'm just going to put it on this plate Quite surprised how robust it is. It's really holding its shape really well. You can see as I'm touching it with the knife, it's going down into the liquid and still holding its shape. So make sure you've got clean hands when you're touching your scoby because otherwise you may introduce bacteria in it that you don't want. And you can see how well that is holding its shape. It is really quite robust. It's I'm so happy with that. I really am. I couldn't have been happier with that at all. So now I'm going to pour some of this liquid into the container with the tea that I'm going to brew. I'll probably bring it up to the shoulder of this jar here. I need to leave some room for the scoby to grow. And so I might give this a bit of a swirl around so that I get some of the other um, bits of scoby that are in there. And just pour that into here, up to the shoulder. You usually need at, at least about 250 mils. I'm not sure that that's really enough, but this is only one litre of tea, whereas usually I'd be brewing substantially more than that at a time. I'm pretty happy. I might pour a little bit more. But you don't want to fill it right to the top because you have to leave room for your scoby to fit in and for a bit of growth to happen. So now I'm going to lift up my scoby, place it in here on the top of the tea mixture. And it seems to be floating, which I think is a really good sign. So here is the scoby sitting on top of the tea mixture. You can see it's that white film across the top so that's all looking really good and you can see there are some gaps because the other jar was squarish and this jar is roundish but the scoby is going to fill itself out so I'm just now going to cover that with the paper towel and lucky band that was on it previously and leave it sit for a while and then we'll come back and we'll see how that's going. So I'm, I'm getting quite excited. This experiment is finally taking off and really getting, I'm getting so much closer to having some homemade kombucha. Tune in next time and we'll be doing a taste test.